Hi guys, it's Kayla and welcome back to Love Tangle. Before we get started, I did want to let you guys know that I finally uploaded my anime collection video on my second channel. So if you are looking forward to that, just click on the top right of the screen right now to view it. Now without further ado, let's get started with Teemo Chapter 6. Here we go! In an effort to keep the leopard from moving about and help speed up recovery following surgery, we are trying our best to keep him sedated. My only wish is that Timo, who has not left the leopard's side, would just take a break. With that in mind, I have chosen to spend the night at the lab, and yet, coming home, he still forced me to leave. I'm finally home. If only Timo weren't still back at the lab, maybe then I'd feel more relieved right now. My intention had been to stick it out with him as long as I could. It's morning. Go home. What? Aren't you coming too? If not, then I'm- I will, but first I have to finish this journal entry. Go on ahead without me and get some rest. But- Stop arguing! <sighs> there was no reason to kick me out like that. Jeez. At least it sounds like he'll be returning to Lilac Court today. The man won't stop until he's done everything in his power. His passion's amazing, although quite possibly a little bit worrisome. He'll wear himself into the ground if he doesn't take a break from that leopard's care. Ideally, the whole team should put together a rotation schedule and do it together. It's obvious Timo isn't getting along with the rest of the researchers. It leads me to believe that's why he's trying to do everything himself. The others must love animals too, or at least have an interest in them. Why else would they become researchers? If there's a reason Timo's so cautious about rehabilitation, can't they see past his obstinacy and recognize it? Contemplating the matter doesn't give me an immediate answer. Not that I expected it would. I finally shake my head in frustration. What's wrong with me? I can't seem to get Timo off of my mind. The moment I realize what I'm doing, I grow incredibly embarrassed. Good morning, Josh. I poke my head into the cafe before returning to my room and say hello to Josh after settling on the sofa. Good morning, Kayla. Don't tell me you're only just now arriving home. Yeah, I was at the lab all night last night. That isn't very healthy. You should get some rest. Do you need anything to eat first? Perhaps something light. I'm hoping to go to sleep soon. I'm halfway through the request when an idea comes to me. You know what, Josh? Could I ask you to make something for Timo, too? Will he be returning home? Yes, at least that's what he told me. I grimace. Only, he's been working so hard lately that I get the feeling he'll go right to bed without eating anything. I know I'm tired, and I was only up with him for one night. After several days with almost no sleep, I suspect food's going to be about the last thing on his mind. However, if I order him something ahead of time, maybe then he'll actually eat it. That's a good idea. Josh happily nods in agreement. I suspect your consideration alone will go a long way towards keeping him sustained. Now you're just being silly. Embarrassed by Josh's remark, I quickly wrap my arms around my pillow, hoping to conceal the bashful grin on my face. I then lean back against the sofa. It feels so pleasant sitting there, clutching the pillow, that I gradually begin to drift off. Meanwhile, an hour after Kayla's arrival, Timo finally returns home to Lilac Court. Welcome home, Timo. I've been waiting for you. You have? When Lilac Court's manager shows up to greet him, Timo returns his greeting with a puzzled look. Unfortunately, I won't be staying long. I've only returned to take a shower. Is that right? I heard you worked all night last night. Don't tell me you're headed right back again. That's my intention. Do you have any problem with it? In that case, at least stop by the cafe before you go and let me make you a cup of coffee. I'm sorry, but I don't have time. I understand you're quite busy. No matter how rudely Timo responds, Josh continues to smile. Timo finally lets out a sigh and nods after realizing continuing to refuse would sound childish. It's impossible to say for sure, but given his apparent discomfort, he seems unaccustomed to receiving other people's concern. I'll prepare it strong, European style to help keep you awake, and put it in the thermos so you can take it to work. Before returning to the laboratory, Timo pokes his head into the cafe as requested. Josh is there to greet him with a smile. Uh, thanks. Josh's kindness earns him a quiet nod from Timo. It's apparent Josh never expected Timo would agree to hang around the cafe long enough to drink a cup. I also have some sandwiches prepared. They're wrapped and ready to go. I trust you'll find time to eat them. Sandwiches? Kayla asked me to make extra for you. She did? Why? Because she's worried about you. She feared you wouldn't take time to eat anything when you arrived home. So she requested I prepare you something ahead of time. Josh glances warmly towards the sofa and Timo follows his gaze. Kayla is sunk into the sofa's cushions, fast asleep. She must have been pretty tired. She fell asleep while I was still preparing sandwiches for her. She's such a kind girl. Mm. Anyhow, Timo, here's your thermos of coffee. I hope you'll take the sandwiches with you too. Uh-huh, thanks. I'll be back for them in a second. Is something wrong? I'm gonna carry her to her room first. Aww. Having said that, Timo lifts Kayla into his arms. She remains fast asleep. 
Good grief. She can be troublesome, even for a new hire. I told her earlier not to worry about me. Josh notices Timo is wearing a smile. Several hours later, mm, I roll over and slowly open my eyes. However, it takes me a moment to figure out where I am. Huh? The ceiling looks familiar. I'm in my room. That's odd. I don't remember coming back here at all. The last thing I remember is asking Josh to make me some sandwiches. My stomach suddenly growls, causing me to blush. Apparently, I never had a chance to eat them. Don't tell me I fell asleep in the cafe and Josh carried me back here. I hastily climb out of bed. If true, it's asking a lot of him. I immediately head to the cafe to say thanks. I hope Josh is here. I quietly poke my head into the door. Oh, hi, Kayla. Did you sleep well? I cover my mouth in embarrassment as Josh smiles at me. Uh-huh. I asked you to make me something to eat, then I fell asleep on you, didn't I? I'm sorry, and thank you very much for carrying me back to my room. That wasn't me. It wasn't? That was Timo. He decided to carry you back when he saw you sleeping on the sofa. Really? I'll have to thank him, too. I realize I'm starting to blush and suspect it's not simply due to embarrassment. In case you're wondering, Timo is back at work. He was barely here long enough to take a shower. He went back, huh? Not surprising. I mean, I know how he feels, but I just wish he'd let others help so he can rest a little bit. He did take some sandwiches with him, though. Your consideration was well received. He did? That's great. Josh smiles at me, but for some reason I can't bring myself to look him in the face. Why do I feel so self-conscious all of a sudden? Josh, you may not know this, but right now, Timo's doing an entire team's workload on his own. As I hesitantly began explaining it to Josh, I realize I'm looking for some kind of consolation. It certainly seems that way. I'm worried about him, and I suspect I should go see how he's doing. I just hope he won't get upset. Why not? I'm sure he will appreciate your concern. Besides, it should give him some encouragement. You think so? Regardless of how aloof he acts, having your support and understanding is certainly encouraging for him, even if only subconsciously. My understanding, huh? I like the sound of that. I ponder Josh's comment for a moment. He seems to know exactly what I want to hear. When I think about it, I suppose I do want to understand Timo better. He may be awkward, but he can be very kind. I want to help smooth out all the difficulties he's having. Not to mention I want everyone else to see what a great person he is. This is the first time I've ever felt that way about anyone. For a place that's dedicated to animal studies, the laboratory can be awfully quiet at night. I hurry through the silence towards our lab space. I arrive there to find a room empty, with the exception of one man sitting at his desk. Timo! Michelle, what are you doing here? I heard you returned to Lilac Court, but didn't even stay long enough to rest. You were already exhausted. Are you sure you're not pushing yourself too hard? I'm worried. You're the one pushing yourself too hard. Didn't you fall asleep on the sofa? Yes, that's how tired I was after staying up for just one night. I'm sure you're a lot more exhausted than I am. By the way, I heard you carried me to my room. I want to thank you for that. When I express my gratitude, Timo abruptly looks away. You don't need to thank me for that. I hear it sounds like a faint sigh. Listen, stop worrying about my behavior, and let me do my work how I choose to do it. Not only is Timo warning me to keep my distance, he's pushing me away. I respond, I just want to help you. Maybe he feels I'm bothering him. Still, I pause for a moment, then bravely take a step toward Timo. I just want to help you. Timo stares back at me in surprise. My career may be a drop in the bucket compared to yours, but there has to be something I can give you a hand with. Will you at least let me try? Michelle, you're truly... Uh, never mind. I hear a faint hint of surprise in his voice and wonder if I've somehow caught him off guard. Timo quietly stares at me. His silence speaks volumes. I wait patiently and eventually he continues. Timo thinks it was the best choice. Michelle, I'm taking a break. Will you have a seat? Sure. I take Timo up on his offer and sit down, excited by the possibility that he seems interested in talking to me. In deference to your curiosity, I'll let you know a little about my previous workplace. What you do with that knowledge is your business. That sounds great. I'd love to hear about your past. I firmly nod. With some hesitation, Timo starts talking. Where I used to work, we had a similar incident with an animal having its bone shattered. I was told to start rehabilitation as soon as possible. I followed instructions, but it was futile. During rehabilitation, the injury grew worse. The pain eventually sent the animal into shock. That's awful! I objected, but the rest of the team wouldn't listen. They insisted I needed to be more flexible. If I had only stood my ground and forced him to put off rehabilitation, the animal never would have had to suffer. That's why I have no intention of backing down this time. That leopard shouldn't start rehabilitation until it's had time to heal. Why don't you explain this to the others? That way they'll understand what you're doing. My words don't carry enough weight. They didn't back then, and I'm sure they won't now either. Timo grimly lowers his gaze. 
I've already expressed what I feel is the right action. It's obvious no one else is listening, which means I can't expect them to eventually understand, so I'm left doing what I think is best. After all this time, I finally realize Timo may appear aloof, but he's actually quite conscious of how his coworkers view him. In fact, he may even feel his inability to relate with others threatens his ability to save animals. That would explain why he shuts them out, creating these misunderstandings and isolating himself in the process. And now, he's falling into a vicious cycle. Timo, thanks for telling me all of that, but I really think the whole team needs to hear it. I'm sure they probably won't be all easily convinced, but you've already managed to convince me. I told you this because it's obvious to me how passionate you are about animals, which I respect. However, I don't sense the same level of enthusiasm from the other researchers. Timo, stop and think about it. There's a limit to how much one person can do. That's why we work as a team. I'm desperate to break the vicious cycle Timo's in and try my best to persuade him. Please, Timo, talk with the other researchers. You really need to share with them what's on your mind. You say you don't expect others to understand you, and yet, I'd like to think I do, after hearing your story. There's nothing to be afraid of. Timo quietly stares at me for several seconds before finally responding. All right. You sure are cheeky for someone who's my junior. He punctuates his quiet remark with a gentle poke to my forehead. The gesture catches me completely by surprise. I never would have imagined him doing such a thing. His awkwardly intimate contact leaves me with a sense of warmth I've never felt from him before. So, someone understands me, huh? Timo smiles. It's a bright, cheerful smile without a shadow of doubt. The following day, when I arrive at the lab, Timo's already there. The strange thing is, he's talking to one of his co-workers. That's why it has to be around the clock if we want to start the leopard's rehabilitation sooner rather than later. Please listen to me. We need your help. Michelle and I are both at our limits. Oh, he's really explaining. Yay! The moment I catch wind of what they're discussing, my heart leaps for joy. Timo took what I said to heart, didn't he? I'm so happy! After all this time managing everything on his own, he's finally discussing things with his coworkers. It's his first step towards sharing his workload with the rest of the team. So, forcing the rehabilitation could make it worse. That makes perfect sense. I see the reason for your concern. Yes, and management's decision to disband the team if we don't start immediately is a poor one. I definitely agree with you on that. Timo smiles when he hears that. Isn't this great, Timo? I'm sure your supporters will only continue to grow in number. We all chose to be animal researchers, so we must think alike on some level, even if we don't agree on everything. As Timo continues to talk, I cheerfully join the ring of coworkers that are gathering to hear his enthusiasm. Nice going, Timo! Timo finally takes a break from talking, and I step closer to whisper in his ear. When I do, he abruptly jerks his head around as if caught by surprise. No way, he's blushing! Ah, uh, thanks. He then hesitantly nods, an unusual gesture for him. To be honest, I'm quite surprised by the results. I'm so glad you've managed to convince some of the others. I have you to thank for it, Michelle. He quietly whispers back. Otherwise, I never would have taken the first step. I think it's because they all recognize you for your abilities as a researcher. So when you placed your trust in them, they were quick to reciprocate. All humans have a tendency to react in kind, don't you think? If you push people away, they'll do the same. But once you open up your heart just a little bit, that's all it takes to thaw the ice again. Hopefully now things will start going more smoothly. Suddenly my outlook is bright and cheerful. Timo's conversative approach based on his experience is adopted and we wait for the leopard's bone to heal fully before starting rehabilitation. Several days later, I'm in the leopard area when I happen to catch a sight of a miracle. Amazing, he's standing all on his own. Biding our time before starting rehabilitation seems to have been the right choice. Yeah, we're seeing almost immediate results. That's fantastic. No kidding. The moment I see the leopard starting to walk around, I begin to tear up. I'm wiping my eyes when my phone rings. The name visible on the display gives me a surprise. Timo's calling me. Hello, Timo? I excitedly answer it. Michelle, where are you? I'm in the leopard area. I just witnessed a miracle. His recovery is going fantastically. Ah, you saw him walking around, huh? I first noticed it last night, just after you returned home. It feels like everything's been going incredibly well since our talk. I want to thank you for that. You don't have to do that. Can I take you out to dinner tomorrow? His offer is too appealing to turn down. Timo's inviting me to dinner? I never imagined this day would come. Thanks, I love that. I immediately accept. The following day, I can't hide my excitement as I hurry back to my room following an early day at work. Dinner with Timo, this should be fun. What should I wear? As I open my closet, I remember the other day when Timo picked out my outfit for me. What would Timo choose? As I recall, he looked at this one for a moment before putting it back. Hmm, maybe I better ask Joy. I head off to Joy's room with the outfit in question. Ooh, Joy's room is so fancy, I don't think we've ever seen it before. 
So, you see, I need your help. Do you think my shoulders are too exposed in this one? Perhaps a little, but it covers your feet, which is good. Joy digs through her huge selection of clothing and holds out two pieces to me. I think this color would look good on you, but pick whatever one you like best. Thanks, Joy. Premium route coming up. Okay. Clear. They said Timo's in the nap room, but I don't see anyone here. This is a cool room, too. I glance all around the room. Wait, what's that? I spot a note sitting on the nightstand and pick it up to discover it's from Timo. He wants me to wait? I wonder if something came up he had to take care of? I sit down on the edge of the bed. I'm still looking forward to our dinner together that discovering him gone leaves me feeling a little bit disappointed. Still, this gives me a chance to enjoy my anticipation. I settle down to wait for Timo's return. It's late. After handing things over to the night staff, I return to find Michelle asleep with her head in her arms on the desk. Michelle? She must be exhausted after spending all her time on the leopard's rehabilitation. I gaze closely at her sleeping face. She may be an excellent researcher, but she looks like any other innocent girl in her sleep. We can have dinner another day. I can't bring myself to wake her when I consider she was tired enough to doze off while waiting for me. Instead, I spread my lap coat over her as a blanket. Ah! I don't want you to catch a cold. However, that's not the end of my motives. I smile at myself. Would she be upset if I touch her? Quietly, I sit down next to her and reach out with my hand. Her long eyelashes flutter, and I realize I want a closer look at them. I slowly lean towards her. Mm, Timo. Michelle? Huh? Is she still asleep? Startled by the sound of her voice, I immediately pull away. My heart is racing from surprise. After a moment, I lean closer to peer at her again, and notice what looks like a faint smile spread across her lips. Captivated by the charming smile, I... Kayla. The moment before our lips touch, I whisper her first name and realize how unfamiliar it sounds to me. Her lips are so soft. Uh, what have I just done? <gasps> he kissed us! I am abruptly appalled at myself. I've just stolen a kiss from Michelle. My first ever dinner invitation from Timo ends early when we both fall asleep in the nap room. Talk about embarrassing. We must have snuggled up next to one another while we were sleeping. After jumping off the bed, the two of us awkwardly make our way back to work. We receive word that the leopard's attending physician, Paul, has just returned from a short trip. I can't wait to share the good news with Paul that the leopard's standing on his own. No doubt he'll be ecstatic. Sure enough, Paul begins smiling broadly when Timo explains how rehabilitation is progressing. That's fantastic! Along with the leopard's own vitality, I'd say we have the care team's collaboration. He shakes both of our hands, and the enthusiasm with which you two back them up thanks for this. To which I add, It was definitely a team effort. I proudly announced to Paul, It was definitely a team effort. Michelle's right. Trust is an invaluable resource. Timo earnestly adds with a huge smile, Timo, you were right. Your caution over starting his rehabilitation turned out to be a huge plus. Thanks again. Although people have been congratulating me on my surgery, it would have been meaningless if his rehabilitation had failed. No, if your surgery had failed, that would have been the end of it. Paul and Timo firmly shake hands while praising one another. Oh, by the way, Kayla. I'm leaving the examination room following our announcement when Paul suddenly calls out to me. Timo, who's walking beside me, also stops. Could you spare a few minutes? Paul throws a glance in Timo's direction as he asks. Now? Yeah, now. He eloquently smiles and steps toward me. That smile is immediately accompanied by a rather suggestive statement. Oh, what a cliffhanger! So that's the end of the chapter. Look forward to the next one. Hey, that's too bad about your date with Timo. Still, it sounds like that night wasn't a complete loss. Oh, don't tell me your relationship is already that far along. No, Carlo, they still got a ways to go. I think. Really, because in the next chapter, the leopard's progress makes a big step forward, and Paul starts pressing for an answer. Carlo, should you be telling her that? What, you mean I shouldn't have? Are you kidding me? It's supposed to be a secret. Oh, sorry. All right, then I'll tell you about Timmy's secret instead. Hold on a second, who's Timmy? Timo doesn't like it, but I call him Timmy, since we're such good buds. Okay, so what's his secret? He gets really talkative when he's drunk and... He starts kissing everyone? Hey, Joy, why'd you steal my surprise? Come on, there's no reason to get so upset. I'm sorry, see you later, Kayla. Ah, <sighs> Kayla, as Timo's friend, I've got to thank you for recognizing what a great guy he is. I hope your pursuit of love continues without a hitch in the next chapter. Well, I've got to come up with a suitable punishment for Joy. Timo thinks it was the best choice. Okay, you guys, we will continue with chapter 7 next time. It sounds like it's going to be a really interesting one. See you guys there. Bye.